right, welcome to this episode of Moving Our World, and I am in a luxury barge from Japan. Uh, this is an old Mazda Cosmo, and this is from 1985, I believe. It's only been in the country for how long? I uh, arrived in July last year, so not quite a year. Yeah, yeah, so this is Anthony or Tony, and he has a bit of a passion for rotaries, I would say, judging by your Instagram. Yeah, definitely. And, yeah, definitely. Yeah. and uh, this is kind of a new acquisition. You used to have a, a 323 wagon? Yeah, yeah, that was just a piston one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, flicked that off and put the money towards importing this. So yeah, sweet. Stolen DBOs, huh? Yeah, unfortunately <laughs> that's the thing. If you can see behind us in the camera, there's a couple of Mazda Demios. It's New Zealand's most stolen car. I've had like a couple of thoughts, and they're a Mazda as well, not a rotary. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been thinking like, man, I need to buy one for like 300 bucks and just see how easy it is to get it stolen or how yeah. easy they are to break into. Yeah. And, and so this is the yeah. point where I bring out my facts and you can sit there and tell me if I'm wrong or not. Oh. I did a bit of research uh, specifically about the Cosmo model. The Cosmo came out in 1967 um, and apparently, Japanese car naming situations are always fraught with a bit of rumours but supposedly the Cosmo came because it was in the 60s it was the middle of the international space race there's a cultural fascination with the space race and Cosmo cosmonaut yeah. is the Russian Soviet word for astronaut basically so supposedly that's where it came from wow. Cosmo yeah okay um, they produced kind of around like 1200 maybe between 67 and 72 of the first shape yeah. and then in 68 as well they also entered two Cosmos into an 84 hour endurance race at the Nürburgring. Oh wow, yeah, yeah. One came fourth and one did not finish due to axle issues, so not reliability yeah. issues with the engine. The second gen is known as Series CD, supposedly, yeah. and that was 75 to 81. It was also the first time in that series, the second series, that they came with a piston engine as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of what they used to look like. Yeah. So 75 to 81 is supposedly that show. Oh that, okay, yeah, wow. So that's, yeah, domestically that would have been badged as an RX-5. Okay. Or the piston version would have been a 121. Wow, okay, so yeah. we didn't possibly get that as a Cosmo. Maybe. Uh, only, yeah, it's weird with Japanese cars because they don't use the, well, from what I know, they don't use the numbering, they don't use numbers in the Mazda JDM market. Yes. So a Cosmo overseas was called for that model anyway was the RX-5 okay um, so Australia got quite a few New Zealand may have got a few but they're certainly rare um, and they were kind of dubbed the ugly duckling of the rotary family because RX-2s RX-3s RX-4s all had somewhat of like a sporting pedigree look. yes maybe not the RX-4 so much but definitely the RX-2 and 3 they were rallied they were raced yeah um, the RX-4s were almost kind of like a almost like a small muscle car look yes and then the RX-5 was it definitely had that appearance that it was made for a US market of like a big coupe yeah so here it was RX-5 or the piston version would have been a 1.8 or a 2 litre I believe that's crazy a 121 yeah. okay sweet so there you go a little bit of history on the series CD or the second gen third gen so it got more square and this is us this is where we are now so that was series HB Yes, absolutely, we're going straight. So Series HB, and it was from yeah. 81 to 87. This one's from 85, yeah. and uh, this one's got a 13B, and uh, the if you look on Wikipedia, because as, as you can imagine, I don't have these facts off the top of my head, they call it a RESI, Rotary Injection. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Rotary Engine Super Injection. Yeah. And under the, the bonnet, it's got Super Injection on a few, yeah. <laughs> few different places there. Yeah. 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 yeah they were, they were, I guess they were proud of having a fuel injected rotary. Yes. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, it was 85, so that's still yeah. pretty cool. A lot of stuff was, was still coming out carburetor back then. Um, this thing, supposedly, according to the official specs, has about 135 horsepower, about 101 kilowatts, and 180 newton meters. Or, well, we'll go to foot pounds actually, because that's the international standard. 133 foot pounds of torque. So not too much talk. No. They um, and it's automatic. This is the only option that came out for the 13B. So yeah. this specific uh, shape of Mazda Cosmo also came out with a 12A, I believe, as well. Yeah, 12A turbo. Yeah, and, um, yeah, and, and the coupes or sedans. So yeah, and they were maybe automatic as well, but definitely had a five-speed option. Okay, and um, it's probably like the most, well, not the most, but one of the most unloved. Um, Mazda rotaries, I guess, in New Zealand, a lot of them were stripped for parts. Yeah. Because they came with a 12A turbo. Yes. And the five speed gearboxes. So there was many 3D3s that were converted, um, or RX2s and 3s that go, got donor 12A turbos out of Cosmos um, and better gearboxes. 
That's insane. When I knew I was coming to film this car, I sat there and kind of thought about my rotary history. I've never actually had many kind of older cars and it's a bit of a shame because that's all I cared about growing up. I like the sound of the rotaries, I like the look. I was that kid that if I had a Vivid or a pen or anything, everything I had in school had a rotary kind of nut drawn yeah, 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 on it. Yeah, yeah. So what's your history with, with, with the whole rotary thing? Um, it would have been when I was probably right. six or seven. Um, my parents moved into a house that they built and the neighbour had an RX-7. Okay. And he would have been like a 17, 18, so he would have been like a boy racer and this would have been probably 93-ish. So that wouldn't no, yeah. have been like um, a Batmobile, it would have been an old... Oh no, yeah, the, old, old, the first shape. I don't. I can't remember if it was a Series 1, 2 or 3, but yep. they all kind of have that same shape, the yep. first model. Yeah. And I didn't know what it was, I just thought it looked cool because it was kind of like a sports car. Yeah. And then he used to sit in the driveway with it idling or like work on the car and it had the brup, brup, brup yes. sound. So I didn't know it was a rotary, I didn't know it was different. I didn't know anything more about them until... Probably when I was like 13, 14, started reading car magazines and understanding that, oh, there's a thing called a rotary and they have more than just an RX-7 and yeah, kind of just started to like them. I remember the sound The sound of a rotary is really, really nice to me. It's, it's, um, it's, it's pleasing to me. A lot of people don't like the pulse and the sound, but I think, I don't know, it's hard to kind of get across on camera the New Zealand rotary scenes existence it's huge yeah and 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 if you come from New Zealand you know exactly what I'm talking about when I was young you'd always see dudes with dreads and Mazda bongo vans that had rotaries and they'd be like blue camo and <laughs> they were on G zeros <laughs> of get into it in New Zealand you kind of almost get tainted with um, a an association ah oh, you're that kind of person but yeah. I, I don't know it's 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 hard to say without sitting there and sounding like you're just being super judgmental about a whole bunch of no, people no, no yeah there's kind of that and, and maybe not anymore because people have sort of grown up and maybe 15 to 20 year old kids aren't into rotaries as like on mass as they used to be yeah. um, you know, RX-7s were, and old 3D3s, and you know, even RX-2s and 3s used to be $1,000 to $5,000 cars. So it could be affordable as your first car when you were that young, and that's when you do the most stupid shit in your life normally as a young guy, between the ages of 15 and 20. Whereas now, yeah, if you want an RX-3, shit, you better have at least 50 to 100k. Yes. You know, depending if you want a project or not. So. And I mean, we spoke with Pete a while ago, you know Pete, or know of Pete, and he had that Aston Martin, and that's kind of the value we were talking about for an Aston Martin. You could go buy three brand new Swifts if you wanted, <laughs> yes. you know, for that sort of price and have trouble-free motoring for life, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess it's, yeah, it's that choice that you sort of make. It would be the same if you compared it to like an old Falcon, or there's the sort of people that like different cars, and no matter what, they'll they'll pay the money that they think it's worth. So, yeah. 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 Triple rotors in New Zealand are becoming definitely not common by any means because it sounds ridiculous saying that they're common. Yeah. But you see more of them now um, than you kind of ever have because a few workshops have um, or use three 13B housings and sort of make a short crank 20B, it's called. Okay. Um, because 20Bs were only made in a very limited run by Mazda. So, and they stopped making them a long time ago. So a factory 20B is quite a rare thing. So, um, I don't know if it was Kiwi ingenu Ingenuity that started the short crank 20B, but we've definitely embraced it. And there's quite a few cars getting around now with either peripheral ported NA kind of 20B motors and they sound amazing. It's kind of like a cross between a super bike. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about like rotary engines in general? Do you know much about them? Like for me, I know the term 12A, I know the term 13B, I know yeah. that there's like peripheral port and um, I, I know that these different terms, yeah. that's about it. I don't know how they yeah. mold together. There's quite a few different configurations. The first one, well made by Mazda anyway, um, was a 10A and that came out in R100s, um, certain, the first model of the RX-3. First Cosmo? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. The, the, 
very first rotary Cosmo had 10 A's in them and then they developed a 12 A which was slightly bigger again so more displacement I guess is the right word in terms of if you're talking about CC rating from then they developed a 13 B which was even bigger and I think the first car to come with a 13 B was an RX4 and RX5 um, and then they continued on with you know run the 80s it was fuel injection on the 13 B's and they had a 12A turbo and some of the series 3 RX-7's and some of Cosmos similar to this and yeah it was 92 I think the RX-7 that Batmobile first came out yeah. so you know technology's evolved since then so I'm sure people do upgrades to make them more reliable than they were from factory. That's all good. Sweet! Do the windows down make a heap of difference with the microphone? Uh, not in this car, it doesn't seem to. Oh, okay. It's your luxury barge, which is actually what I want to talk about shortly, so... Uh, have you had enough time in this thing to get used to the different features that it has? Because it's not just your average 1985 issue vehicle that would usually be kind of bog spec standard. Uh, most Japanese stuff that a lot of us are used to from their era, no electric windows, no anything, but I'm noticing all these buttons. Yeah, I know. So <laughs> many buttons. <laughs> we'll go left and then left again and just yeah. follow straight on for ages. It does have air conditioning, but it doesn't really work. Okay. Um, I'm noticing a suspension adjusting yeah. thing. Have you touched yeah. that? Uh, when it was factory, yes. I didn't notice any difference, but um, there was plugs on top of every single shock absorber strut, so it had wiring going to them to adjust um, something. Yeah. I and you've just blanked those off or just not plugged them in again? Uh, yeah, the new struts don't have any connection, yeah, so yeah, they're just, the plugs are going to nowhere now. There's speed control, which could be cruise control. Uh, obviously the clock, the wipers are controlled here, the headlights wipers are controlled Wipers are there? Here. Yeah. Okay. Um, fan, then there's yeah, park lights, the adjustment for the fender mirrors, um, rear windscreen wiper does work. Yes, yeah. luxury. Uh, that's the first time for that. So, yeah, most things seem to work. Hazard lights work, I've used those. Um, All right. Yeah. It's always fun being a passenger in your own car, too. So, yes. Yeah. yeah, if you want to take it for a burn. Absolutely. Later, I it's, it's, might yeah. swap over just so you can uh, fulfill yep. that wish. Yeah. Jump into the left lane, and we're going to head off, and we're going to do a rite of passage in this city, which is a lap of the, of the mount. <laughs> nice. Because if we don't do it, have you even really moved here yet? No. Yeah. Have you ever been to the mount? Have you ever been to the mount? Uh, basically, this will be somewhat of the end of our massive Mazda Cosmo conversations. It's been super awesome filming this thing. I might chuck a couple of shots of me driving in this, but yeah. I might actually just make that another video. Yeah. Why not stretch out the content, eh? All good. Yeah, and and um, yeah, that's it. So thank you so much for letting me sit in your passenger seat. Uh, it's nice to meet you after our first conversation about yeah. seven days ago. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's been super awesome. This whole moving our world process is, is honestly, I've met more people in the last yeah. three months of filming yeah. and one month of uploading than I have in the four years previous. Funny. It's forced yeah. me to be very social. Bye.